All right, so today we're going to talk about the broadcast block and the when I receive block. Now, these are very handy blocks to have because they allow sprites to communicate with each other. So sometimes you have two sprites, like we have right over here, and you want one sprite to talk to the other sprite so that they can send back messages about what to do. So in this example, we have these two sprites telling a knock-knock joke, and you can see that they're taking turns talking because between each message, one of them is sending a message to the other that it's their turn to talk. All right? So let's see this in action. Knock, knock. Who's there? Wah. Wahoo. Why are you so excited? Horny joke, but you can use it to show this example in knock, knock. So what we're actually going to do is we are going to show simple examples of broadcast. We're going to build up to being able to do just this thing. Now, broadcast is going to be very useful for us because we're going to use it in the big project that's coming up in order to build a story so that multiple sprites can basically tell other sprites to appear or disappear. So for this example, let's do the following. Let's say we have two sprites. We have our friend over here, the cat, and over here on the right, we have our friend, the dinosaur. So we have these two sprites set up. What I'm going to do is the following. When we click on the cat, it's going to say hello, and the dinosaur is going to respond with how are you. Nice and simple. So as we said, we're going to do this when the cat is clicked. So let's make sure we have the cat selected. So we click on the cat here. And now we're programming the scripts for the cat. I'm going to do when I am clicked, so that it does this when he is clicked. And let's start real simple. Let's make him just say hello for two seconds after he is clicked. All right. So now we have this script. And we can see that when I click on him, he says hello for two seconds. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that this dinosaur responds with how are you after two seconds passed when the cat said hello. So to do that, the cat sprite can actually tell the dinosaur sprite to respond. And we are going to use the broadcast block for that. So the broadcast block is going to do is it's going to send out a notification to the dinosaur saying, hey, I am ready for your response. So the way we do this is we put this broadcast block and we hit new. What new is going to let us do is it's going to let us specify a new kind of message. So the message that we want to convey to the dinosaur, we can pick anything we want here as long as we recognize it later. Let's say uh, we call this just finish saying hello, something easy to identify. All right. So we know that when this message is broadcast, just finish saying hello, the dinosaur knows that the cat just finished saying hello. Now we select the dinosaur, make sure we're scripting for that. And we're going to use the when I receive block to say, as soon as I receive the message, just finish saying hello, I'm going to do this stuff. I'm going to respond by saying hi. Or how are you? Okay. So let's see how this works out. I'm going to click on the cat. It's going to say hello for two seconds. And the dinosaur is going to respond with, how are you? So one cool property of the broadcast command is that it actually goes to every sprite. So what you can actually do is you can use broadcast to have one sprite talk not just to one other sprite, but to every single sprite, which can actually be really handy, as we might see in the future, on a button. You might have a button to clear or reset every sprite. So let's use this example. Here we have the same cat as before. And our cat is going to tell these three dinosaurs to race. So he's going to say, on your mark, get set, go, and they will all start racing. So for this, we are going to use the same I am clicked block for the cat. And I'm going to send, um, first I'm going to say some stuff. I'm going to say, on your marks. And we're going to do that for one second. I'm going to say, get set. and go. And after the cat says go, we are going to basically broadcast the message ready to go to let everyone else know that they should be ready to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this dinosaur and we're going to do when I receive ready to go. And it's going to do the following. It's going to say forever or maybe repeat 10 and let's say it's going to uh, change x by let's say one 
And every time it walks a step, it's going to wait a tiny bit so it doesn't go too fast. Let's say it's going to wait for 0 0.5 seconds. <clears throat> and we're going to do the same for the other two dinosaurs, except maybe they'll walk a little bit slower or a little bit faster. Actually, let's see how it is just with the one dinosaur for now. So let's click on the cat. It's going to go on your marks, get set, go. And it's going to broadcast that message. All right. And we see that the dinosaur is moving ever so slowly. In fact, it barely moved, barely saw it. So let's make, instead of change x by 1, let's make it change x by, I'll say 10. See how we're kind of debugging here. Get set, go. There we go. Now it's moving a little faster. Okay, so let's move it back to the beginning. And let's have the other dinosaurs do the same thing. So one handy trick is you can actually copy this block of code in a variety of ways, but the easiest way is actually just to move it to the other sprite. You notice that the other sprite gets hovered when the mouse goes over it. If I let go, this actually got copied onto the sprite over here. You can see these are different sprites. Right? So I'm going to make the second sprite, which is this one, move by 20 instead of 10. So it's going to be a little bit faster. And I'm going to copy this onto the third and last sprite. And this one is going to change by, let's say he's going to go by 10, but he's going to wait less between each step. It's going to wait only 0.2 seconds. So now let's see what happens. I'm going to broadcast ready to go. It's going to say on your mark, get set, and then it's going to say ready to go. And all three of these dinosaurs are going to receive the ready to go, and they're going to start running. So on your marks, get set, go. And here we go. Three dinosaurs walking at different paces. So we are finally ready to go full circle. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do our knock-knock joke. But we're going to do it a little differently from the original example. We're going to have a button that's going to tell all of the actors, in this case the cat and our faithful dinosaur, to start the process. So to make a button, it might not be super intuitive, but actually the button is just going to be a sprite. So we're just going to add a whole new sprite. It's a little red triangle. And we are going to edit the sprite. So we're going to click on this uh, in costumes. We're going to click on this right here, paint new costume. So make sure you have the red sprite selected. We're going to paint a new costume for our sprite. Right? So we're going to make a green button like this. And Snap doesn't actually provide us any tools for drawing text. So the best way to have neat text is actually to just import this image from Paint or some other software. But we can actually just draw it by hand. It's not going to be super neat, but it'll do. So let's go ahead and make sure that we have a black pen so we can see it. Select just the pencil. We're going to do start. All right, that's surprisingly not too ugly. All right, and we hit OK. And we have a big old start button at the top. So what we're going to do is when we click on the start button, we're going to start our scene. So that's going to be very similar to before. Make sure you have start selected. So we're scripting for start. And we're going to do when I am clicked. So this is how you're going to do a button click. So when the start button gets clicked, it's going to broadcast a message saying, ready for joke. Notice, by the way, that the message you type into the broadcast, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to be shown to the user. It's just part of the code. As long as you can recognize what message this is later, you can put anything you want there, as long as it's recognizable. I recommend something descriptive, though. So when you click on the button, it's going to broadcast ready for joke. And the cat is going to start. So the cat is waiting to receive the message ready for joke. And when it gets the message ready for joke, it's going to start the knock knock joke. So it's going to say knock knock for two seconds, say for one second. And then the cat's going to tell the dinosaur that, it's, that it just said knock knock, right? So notice that the dinosaur can't read the same message. That's just for appearances, just for looks. Uh, the only thing that the dinosaur is able to interpret or read is the broadcast. So we have to use broadcast for this. We're going to go ahead and broadcast a message saying, just said knock knock. And the dinosaur knows that when it gets the message just said knock knock, it means that the cat just finished saying knock knock. And now the dinosaur is going to react. So the dinosaur is going to wait until it receives just said knock knock, which means the cat finished saying the knock knock part of the joke. 
it's going to respond with who's there for one second. All right? And now the cat needs to know about that. So we have a back and forth going. So in previous examples, we had the cat sending the broadcast, but nothing was sending the broadcast back. In this case, the, the dinosaur is also reacting with a broadcast. So it's saying, said who's there, and we're going to broadcast a message saying, just finished saying who's there. OK? And now the cat's going to react with its part of the joke. So it's sitting here waiting to receive the message, just finished saying who's there. And it's going to, I'm going to pull the block in. It's going to say wah, which is our joke. It's a terrible joke, but I'm going to use it. And like before, we're going to keep doing this. It's going to let the dinosaur know that we just said wah. Just said wah. The dinosaur is once again going to react. We're almost done. Don't worry. The dinosaur says, knows that when it gets the response, so in this case the cat just said wah, it's going to say wah hoop. And we send our last broadcast, which is just said wahoo. And the cat's going to say, finally, the punchline, which is when I receive wahoo, he's going to be a smart aleck, and he's going to respond, why are you so excited? Get it? Wahoo. All right. So let's see this in action. I'm going to click on the start button. I say knock, knock. Who's there? Wah, wahoo, why are you so excited? We got covered by the button, but you got the point. Right? So what you see here is a great way for sprites to communicate with each other. And also, this is a good example of how to set up a button that basically sets up or creates a scene. So this is going to be very helpful when you create your scene for the story or the fairy tale or nursery rhyme or whatever you choose so that you, at the end, have a button called start over or show again or restart, which basically tells everyone to get back in position and starts the play or the story again. And with that, we covered everything we need to know about broadcasting.